There you go. I always have to remember to start the recording. So uh, we're going to get started today. Uh, and like I said last class, uh, just as a kind of a refresher reminder, we've canceled the check-ins this week so that you can use your extra time toward your project. And I'm going to use an example project today. I'm going to work to integrate it into the two different sites. So one is Lake Tahoe and one is on the coast. I'm gonna walk you through the process of integrating into either one of those sites and kind of how I would go about doing it to get you ready. The further you get along, the better you're gonna be. Uh, you'll see that at the end of today's exercise, uh, I'm asking you to perform a, a rendering. Well, of course, this isn't gonna be your final rendering uh, because they're gonna make changes and whatever, but we're going in the direction of starting to create renderings. and. When we, when we push renderings forward and start to do it, it's always a good idea to set up your views and to create your renderings such that it's, you have a, an existing rendering and then you can substitute it out with a better rendering. And then you take that one and as you improve, you substitute it out with a yet a better rendering. So there's always a rendering there that you could show or you could use or you could work with. And as you improve, you just create a new, better rendering and you replace it. And this is especially important when you get to a final project where maybe you have four different required renderings. And so in the case of our final for this class, you have four required renderings and your project and you make one of them better. And then you look at all four renderings, you say, which one's the worst one? Let me pick that one and I'll make that one better. And then you go back and you look at them all because that one's better now and you look at the next worst one and you make that one better. And at some point you're going to run out of time, but you still have all four renderings ready. Even if one of them is not quite as good as you want, you still have that going forward. So I'm going to start to encourage you to set up saved views and to perform that same rendering over as you improve, as you add lighting, as you do the next steps, we'll continue to make that better. So theoretically today, you could get your building into the site and you could start setting up things like the sun, the background HDRI, all the things that we've done in class, you could start doing. That being said, that's a lot of work. So I encourage you to get as far as you can, but if you're not quite there yet, we'll catch up and we'll make sure we get it in one of these uh, upcoming lectures. So uh, all that being said, I'm going to share my screen right now. And there we go. We've got the, the screen shared. Okay, and so what I have is I have my sample model here of, of a building. This is the one that I'm gonna end up integrating into the site. It's kind of a, a split level where I have uh, two rooms stacked on top of each other and I have another room that's kind of a cave and then I have this glass tower in between. There's a little bit of a roof deck over here uh, and there's a little bit of a porch deck out here. Um, so obviously I've spent a little bit more time working on this than you probably have, but I wanted to show you kind of, this is an example and this is what we're, what we're getting toward. Okay. So I have this file and I've gone ahead and I've saved it. Now, what I would encourage you to do is to create a folder on your flash drive. Uh, I've done the same thing here where inside of my 136 folder, I have something for the artist's retreat. And I know we're going to have multiple exercises coming out of this, but I have this one folder and this is where I'm just gonna keep working on the same file. And you'll see in here, because obviously I've done this class multiple times, I have a folder for each semester. Um, this spring of 2022 is where we're gonna start. And so I have my retreat file, the one that I started creating and I'm calling it a retreat. You can call it whatever you want, uh, but that's the file that has the building in it. And so that'll be right there. Now, as we move forward, I'm gonna jump up and I'm gonna show you, uh, here's exercise 219. And if we scroll down here toward the bottom, I have a downloads section. I've got information for the Lake Tahoe site and I've got information for the coastal site. You're gonna want to, if you pick the Lake Tahoe site, you'll download the Lake Tahoe stuff. If you pick the coastal site, you'll download the coastal stuff. So you will right click on these files and we'll choose to save link as. I'm gonna put it on my flash drive here. Get to my artist retreat folder. There it is, here's this semester. And for argument's sake, I'm gonna create a new folder and I'm gonna call this, uh, let's say, uh, Tahoe. So I can create the Tahoe stuff here and we'll go ahead and save it. I'm confused why it's downloading an HTM file instead of downloading. Is 
there it is. Let's go ahead and make sure that it, uh, it's okay, it's showing up in my downloads folder. So I wanna right click and extract this file to that Tahoe folder. There it is. So let's make sure it goes in there. And I'll extract it, good. So that's giving me specific information about the Tahoe site. There's a few other pieces to the Tahoe site. So I wanna make sure I get all the pieces so that they're on my flash drive before, before we get started here. Let's go back to files, oops. Make sure I get this. This is the material. There it is. Let's show it in its folder. And I'm making sure that I extract all of these. So I'll right click and say extract all. And again, it belongs in Tahoe, so we'll put it there. And there's that one. It's kind of the, the land material that goes on it. And then let's go back to here. And I have the water material. I think the water material may come through, but it may not. So I wanted to make sure I gave it to you just in case. So we'll go to show and folder. Uh, let's right click and say extract all. And we'll put it in the same folder here and extract that. Perfect, so I have the, the lake material. Now, if you're doing the, sorry, if you're doing the ocean or the coastal site, I have an ocean and I have a water ocean. So same thing here where we wanna download these. That one's actually not a zip file, so I just have to copy it over. And let's do a new folder. You obviously won't be creating these two because you'll pick one side or the other. Uh, but since I'm gonna demonstrate both, I have to have both. So we'll call this ocean. And I'm gonna paste that file here. And then let's go back. And there's the, the water ocean material, we'll download that. And then we need to extract that. So let's show it. Right click, extract all. And we'll make sure it goes in the ocean folder there as well. Okay, so I just I just dumped those pieces uh, into these respective folders, so that's perfect. Now, before I actually start getting uh, going here, I wanted to demonstrate one other thing, and this is kind of one of those uh, pieces of the puzzle that that may be beneficial long term. Uh, and Angie, let me answer your question just real quick, and then I'll keep going. We will get to furniture on the interior uh, and we'll use some, some reference files. You can download files to work with and whatever, but that's not necessary for today. So we're just trying to get the building exterior put together for today and then we'll get to it. So I'll include it as part of the exercises to come. Okay, so what the other thing that I wanted to show you is uh, you guys by now have figured out that the uh, school computers using the remote desktop love to log you out after 30 minutes of, of being idle. Well, when we start to do more complex renderings and more complex work like this, uh, there's a way of keeping them open. It's kind of a workaround um, in the system. And I, I always wait until a little bit later in the semester because it's not really nice to do it because it ties up the computer permanently, kind of defeats the purpose of why they log you off. But when we start doing the renderings, it starts to become important. So if you do Google search for caffeine app, you'll end up with this link. It's made by Zorn Software and it will open this little um, website and you can download this for free. So we'll click on download and I would encourage you to save it right here into your uh, OneDrive so it'll sync. And what happens is when you first log in and you sync your OneDrive file, I have it right here, that, that, that app that you saved, you'll open the Caffeine 64 and it will launch a little coffee pot that shows up down here in your uh, task bar down by the clock. And what you can do is you can right click on it and choose to make it active for a specific amount of time. I usually choose eight hours. And what it does is it, every minute or so, it presses the F15 key, which does, doesn't interfere with anything that we're currently working on, but it keeps your screen active and open and logged into you. And it won't log you out, which is awesome. 
And this is particularly important when we get to the more uh, advanced renderings and stuff. So, uh, you know, think about how long you really need it. Don't choose 24 hours because it does tie the computer up. You're not going to use it for 24 hours. Think, you know, four, six, eight hours, somewhere in there. And you can uh, choose to have that going. And that cleans your computer for a little bit of time. So while I, I hate the workaround, it's kind of something that's necessary when we're doing these kinds of renderings. So I wanted to make sure I showed you that today before we get too much further. Perfect. So now that I have those down, I'm going to start to create these files. Let's close these here. I'm going to start to create these files. Like I said, I have my retreat file. Now, I'll start as an example with the Tahoe uh, site, and then I'll move over to the ocean. So in Tahoe, I have two different files that I downloaded for you. The first one is called Tahoe site, and the second one is called Tahoe lock. So the Tahoe site file is actually going to become what I would refer to as my master site. So I'm going to go ahead and double click on Tahoe site and open it up. Okay, and so what I have here is I have a little piece of terrain that represents right where we were doing that modeling. But again, if I were to install my building here and look out as if I were looking out across Tahoe, I don't have the, the grander context around this building. Um, so let's add that in. And we're gonna do that by using a block. So I'm gonna go to file and then save as, and I'm gonna put this instead of in the Tahoe folder, I'm gonna put it in my main folder and I'm gonna call this master site dash Tahoe. Now you guys could just call it master site, that's fine. And I'll go ahead and click on save. There it is. Now I can bring in a block reference. So I'll go to edit blocks and then block manager. And right here, oops, sorry, I need to insert block instance first. So let me go to edit blocks, insert block instance. And I'm going to bring in that Tahoe block file. So let's go to my OneDrive. Let's go to my live demonstrations here into my artist retreat folder. And we'll go into Tahoe. And I'm going to choose the Tahoe block file. And you can see that the size of this file is much larger than the Tahoe site file. So we'll go ahead and say open. We're going to make sure that this is a linked block as a reference. We'll go to linked and reference. We'll say, OK. We'll say, OK, again. And now you can start to see this coming in. I'm going to need to drop it somewhere. Drop it right there. And then I'm going to type in move. And I'm going to snap to that corner. So let me turn on my endpoint snap. So I can snap right there. And I'm going to align that with my site right there. And you can see that it, it turns out to be seamless. Little site, but it gives us a lot more context. There's all of Lake Tahoe and there's all the surrounding mountains. So if I get down here to set up a view and I'm looking out over Lake Tahoe and the mountains, you see that I'm seeing neighboring mountains rather than just blank, blank uh, location. So I brought that in as a reference. And I'm doing that on purpose because this is going to allow me to turn off that block when I'm not using it, like that, which is going to make working with this file much easier. So it's, again, a reference file for me. All right, so there it is. Now we need to work through actually getting my building into this site. So let's turn off the Tahoe terrain for a second, or the Tahoe block. We're left with just the Tahoe site. Let's go ahead and save this. It's always a good idea to save now that those are put together. And now I need to bring in that retreat file, the one that has my building in it. So I'll go to um, edit blocks and then insert block instance. I'm going to browse. And this time I'm going to choose my retreat file. We'll go ahead and say open. It's again going to be linked as a reference layer. We'll say OK and OK. And now I need to bring this in. Now, of course, this is going to be really, really small. So let's see here. Let's put it, let's try it right about there. Little itty bitty. 
Now, the other problem here, though, is that placing it on the site can be rather difficult. So sometimes you want to get it close, and you can see that it's actually way over here. So maybe moving it in the top view is beneficial to get started. And if you want to see what it looks like with the, with the uh, terrain on it, we can go into shaded mode, or excuse me, rendered mode. There's my block. Let's move it. And we want to move it so that it's kind of over in here. And then we need to move it vertically so that we can start to see it because it's much too low. So let's move. And then I'm going to type V for vertical. And we'll move it up. And we'll take a look. All right, we're getting kind of close. Let me zoom select it on it. Back up a little bit. Now, of course, I, as I told you, the sites are really, really big right now. So I have to start to figure out where does this fit on the site. So let's move it back a little bit. Oops, let me turn on ortho. All right, so now we can start to see that it's starting to intersect with my building. Like that. I'm going to rotate this because I don't really like the placement of this building. So let's rotate by 180. Uh, I'm going to rotate back like that. I kind of like that a little bit better. And then I'm going to continue moving this in small amounts. And for me, I have part of this building. Oops, kind of buried in the ground here. You can see it's kind of buried there. Let me zoom out a little bit. You know, I don't really like this position. Let me rotate it again. And this is why I do these things live because you guys can see me make decisions as I start to work with it. Let's move it, let's move it over here. There, put this back. Zoom selected. And I'm kind of seeing where it now notice that when I created this, I gave myself some space below the building. We call it a foundation. I'm going to rotate it one more time. There we go. And now we're starting to see this start to feel like it's part of the site. Let's move it vertically again. Oops. Now, the other option here is I could use the gumball if I wanted to. All right, so I could turn on the gumball and that would allow me to just kind of nudge it. Not like that. Push it back in there a little bit more. All right, I want to make sure that that's sticking out. So you may have to make some edits along the way. Uh, I really would, would prefer to have more of this building sticking in the ground. Let me, let me move this down the slope a little bit. Come on. I'm just zooming selected again. And so you can see that this is actually a fair amount of work to get this set right. So right about there looks pretty good. Let's see how it looks on the back side of the building. Yeah, so this is still floating, that back room. So I may have to make some adjustments uh, and change the foundation. And this is something that does happen uh, as you try to integrate this. OK, so I have this set. We'll go ahead and, and make some adjustments. And I'll show you that process in just a second. But I have this building approximately where I want it to go on the slope here. And now I need to cut out the slope for it. So to do that, it's usually easiest to do it in the top view. Let me make the top view active. Oop, let me select it first, just so we can see where it is. I'll type Z for zoom, S for selected. And there's my building. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to trace a line around the building. And it may be helpful to switch back into just your wireframe mode 
to kind of see what it is you're tracing. And I'm going to work my way around the building. I want to make sure that I'm just doing the perimeter of the building. So we'll go like that. there and then we'll close it. Now this line may not actually be flat. If we were to look at it in the perspective view, it may be bouncing all over my building. Yep, there it is going up and down all over the building. However, if I use it in this top view and I choose to do a projection, so I'll type in project or um, curve, curve from objects project. I'm gonna project that line onto this big surface. The resulting line is going to be right on the surface. I like that. And that will let me trim out that part of the surface. So I can go ahead and type trim. And I could get rid of that part. So I don't have the ground flowing through my building anymore. Now, as I said, this part of the building isn't tall enough to support what it is that I'm trying to do. I have a kind of a floating building there. So at this point, I would save this. So I'll go to file and save. And I come back to my retreat file, this one. And I come over here and I'd extend this kind of rear wall down. So let's look at it. Let me do a new polyline. We'll come up here. Let me turn on end snap. And we may find that actually switching out of rendered mode into shaded mode would be helpful. There we go. Actually, let me do ghosted mode. So I can get that corner there, there, there. Right there. I'll go ahead and hit enter. Then I'll take that line that I just created and I'll extrude it extrude curve, and I'm going to make that go down. I can make it come actually way down like that. And I'm giving myself kind of a new foundation under the building. Then I can go ahead and save this. I'll go to file and then save. And I'll jump back over into this file. I'll go to edit, blocks, block manager. I'll take my retreat file and I'll update it. And now I have that part there kind of filled in, which is good. Now, I also have this little kind of retaining wall here that I think probably would be good to kind of fill in with some more terrain. So I may choose to start here, come across to my building there, come into, let me turn on perpendicular snap. Come on. Let me snap to right underneath there. Come on. Okay, sorry, I had some audio problems there. Uh, let me see here, I lost it. Let me just finish it. Then selected. Okay. okay, so there's this, here's that line that I was working on. I need to keep working on it. So let's go from there to right there. And we'll come back to right there. Then I can take those two lines together and I can perform a curved network on those. So network SRF. Uh, oops, sorry, they were not exploded into four segments. Let 
and they explode those. Now we can do a network surface. And I can basically fill in that part of the ground. Don't worry that the materials are off right now. It's, a, it's applying to everything. But I would need to also work my way around the building there. And to be realistic, I should probably soften those edges so that they're not straight. So I should do some modifications. But you guys have the skills to be able to do that now and kind of fill it in. So you have a choice. You can fill it in uh, here and around your building, or you could do it uh, on site afterwards. You'll see that in the other uh, file, the one that I have um, on the coast, it integrates a little bit better. Um, so this will make a little bit more sense on the coastal setting. But I kind of want to go through it in both contexts. So there it is. And we've integrated into the, the, the site. At this point, it would be time for a sun and a background HDRI. I have some things already set up, and I want to remind you that these things exist. If you go to the digital tool site, and maybe I'll cross link them on today's exercise, I just haven't done it yet. So let me go to digital tools. Oops. Can I not type? There we go. Under resources here, I have my V-Ray quick rendering setups right here. And this is designed to help you out a lot. So I have the basic day scene five, the basic day scene six. Both of those are easy to load. It tells us all the information we need to know about when the sun would be set up. I have two adapted suns. So this one is to San Francisco. This one is adapted to the Tahoe because the, the geographic locations are slightly differently. So let's go ahead and uh, use this. I'm going to use the scene 06 here. Uh, I already have the downloaded files. I've already downloaded the VizOpt or the VR opt files. So I'm going to go ahead and use those off my flash drive, and we'll come back and reference that. So I'm going to open my V-Ray options. Of course, I'll make sure that my materials are downloaded, which they are. That's good. Let me go into my settings. I'm going to click on this little folder icon to load render settings from file. And then I've already saved these on my flash drive, as I said. So I'll come down here under resources, under V-Ray. I have my HDRIs set up. So I have my days, my nights, et cetera. I'm going to go into my days. I said I would use 06. There it is. I have two options. I have a very high and I have a medium. I'm going to use the very high right now. We'll say open. And that then resets all of my settings. So that's good. Now all I need is my sun. So we'll go in here, <coughs> excuse me, to create my sun. And I need the information. So right here, adapted for Carson City, we're going to use San Francisco as our location. Our date is 830 of 2019. And our time is 152. And our rotation is 0.92. So let's do San Francisco. 830 2019. So let's go back to Rhino. So to San Francisco. We're going to do this is 2019. That should be 830. And the time was 150 p.m. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Let's just double check. 152. Fifty-two. Okay. All of that's good. We're gonna go ahead and say okay. And we'll drop this in. Now I always like to, to attach it to my building or something where I know where it is. So I just put that in. If I want to see it, let's go into shaded mode. And there I can see that, that light that we just put in. That's our sun. Let's go back to my V-Ray options. So we'll go into our V-Ray options. We need to go into our environment and make sure we load those HDRIs. The settings are all there, but the HDRIs themselves aren't there. So let's right click and clear. Then we'll click on it. We're going to add a bitmap. This is all good review. Here's my 006. I've got a reference file and an environment file. We use the reference file first. And there it is. We should be able to see it loaded up right there. That's good. 
Now under texture placement here, we want to make sure that my horizontal rotation is set at 90. That was where that last number comes in. So right here, we'll go back. It says my north H rotation is 0.92, sorry. So right here, we're going to go 0.92. There we go. And that just rotates our horizon a little bit. Then we'll go back to my settings. We're going to do the GI. So I'll first clear it. So let me right click and say clear. I'll click it again. Go to bitmap. And we're going to do the environment. And we'll choose to open. Same thing here under texture placement. This should be at 0.92. And this is, you could figure these out using your, uh, um, using that sphere like we did in exercise 116 or 216, uh, but I'm giving you the information so you don't have to, which is good. Okay, so all of that's been set now. I know that I do have a problem with my materials. They didn't come through correctly, but at this point, I could actually start to set up my first rendering. So I could say, you know what? I like kind of this view. Now, sometimes people are gonna want uh, to look at what their camera looks like. So let me make sure nothing selected, which it is. Let me go into my settings and right here, you can see that under camera, I have a lens length set at 50 millimeters. That's kind of a telephoto lens. For exterior architectural shots, I generally like a 28 millimeter. And you'll see that it's a little bit wider angle and it distorts a little bit more, but I think it shows a little bit more and, and looks a little bit better. Once I have the view that I like set up, I wanna save it. So let me click the down arrow next to perspective. I'll come down here to my set view, name views. And for lack of something better, I'm gonna save this as render one. And I'll go ahead and say, okay. So I have render one view saved. Let me turn back on my Tahoe background, there it is. And we can actually perform a rendering. Let's go in and look at the settings one more time under my render output. Render output there. Okay, it's reasonably small for right now. I do prefer matching the viewport so that we get an exact copy of what we see. And before I perform the render, I am gonna save this. So I'll go to file and then save. And then I'll go ahead and start a render and we'll see what it looks like. In the meantime, I'm gonna go over to the ocean scene and I'm gonna show you how to build that one up. So we'll leave this one. You can kind of see that it's starting. I've got some material issues. I've got some problems. Um, all of that will sort out, but I do have a nice HDRI and I do see kind of the horizon with the mountains and, and that sort of thing. Okay, so we'll let that kind of chew on the rendering for a bit. And in the meantime, I'm gonna jump over into the ocean file. So let's come back here. And there's my ocean. Now for the ocean, I only gave you the, the ocean um, which is like a giant dinner plate that will serve as the ocean, but I didn't give you the land. So you're gonna have to get the land um, from your original download. So let's see if I already have it here. And it'd be nice if I had it, hold on. That was in the Tahoe stuff. Okay, so let's see, that would be site two. So I'm gonna import the SketchUp file for site two, so that one. So let's create a brand new Rhino. And again, I'm leaving my old Rhinos open. So let me come back to the start menu. I'm gonna open up Rhino. Of course, if I can find it. And so we're going to do a new we'll do large object inches and I'm going to bring in the sketchup file I'll go to file and then import and let's go to my flash drive here Where is it? Ah, uh, site information. 
and it was site two. Let's open. And there it is. So I've just brought that site in. Now remember, I brought it straight all the way in. So I just imported it. This site's a little bit easier because we don't need all the context because the ocean serves as the context. Um, so right now it is a mesh, which is a little bit challenging to work with. Let me get rid of that little piece there. All right, I'd like to convert this over and we've done this many, many times in class. Uh, I can create that um, contour or you know, the contours to create this into a, a NURB surface. So let me go ahead and I'm gonna make this layer active. Let me contour this. And I guess in the interest of fairness, after I'm done with this, I'll post it so that uh, you can just download it. So there's my first set of contours. See my second set of contours, I'll right click. We're gonna go in the Y direction. I just did them on the same, uh, layer we turn off what's existing i need to do a little bit of cleanup here that edge looks okay that edge needs some cleaning so let's do a trim All right, enter to finish. I'm gonna trim these guys. Um, this site linked um, on the assignment. I'm going to link it. Yeah, uh, the the actual the SketchUp file is linked, but I didn't give you the Rhino file. And since I gave uh, the Tahoe file, I think it's only fair that I give this file. But I don't have it ready, so I'm making it right now, and then I'll post it. Okay, no problem. So, but I, you know, I'm all about being fair. So I'm not trying to be unfair. I'm just, I realized that just now. So I'll make sure that I post it. Okay, thank you. All right, so I have those ready. Let's change the layer here and I'm gonna do a curved network on this. So we'll do a network surface of it. And of course it doesn't like me, probably because I missed something somewhere. Let's take everything, Let's see if we can do it this way. There we go. Oh, I should have saved it first. All right, so there it is. And I'm gonna do a rebuild of this and we'll do it at 100 by 100. Okay, and now we can turn off this and we're left with just the smooth site right there. So I'll go into uh, shaded mode like that and you can kind of see it. So this is a much simpler site. Most of the time people are picking, you know, on this outer edge looking out toward the ocean, the ocean being that way. So I'm gonna save this. I will, I will fix it, like I said, before I post it, I'll fix it so that it has the, um, the material applied to it and you're, you're ready to go. So it's the same as the Tahoe site. Um, okay, so uh, now that I have this, I need to bring my building into it. So first off, let's go to file and then save as, and I'm gonna save this as the, make sure I get into today's folder. This is the master site ocean. And I'll click save and since I wanna be able to, uh, well, I'll just delete mine out of it afterward. Okay, so there it is. Now we need to bring in the building. So just like we did before, I'll go into edit blocks and then insert block instance. And I'm going to choose my retreat file. So we're not looking for a SketchUp file. We're looking right now for my actual Rhino file. So we'll switch. And there we go, it's gonna be a retreat. And I'll click on open. This is again going to be a linked block with a reference layer structure. Say okay, and okay. And there's my building. So I'm gonna place this right down in here. 
And that one's actually pretty close. Now I can use the gumball again to kind of get this set up here. And you'll see that this is a little bit better suited for the terrain here. And it's a slightly steeper terrain. So let's go right about there. Yeah. And you can see that the, the terrain actually runs right through the building. And oops, it's a little bit high. Let me move it up. Let's see what that. Yes, perfect. So it's it's sloping its way around the building. Yeah, I like it. Okay, so now that I like this placement, let's go ahead and save it. I'll go to file and then save. And I'm going to do the same thing that I did in the last one. Let me select it, jump over into the top view. I'm going to do Z for zoom, S for selected. And I'm going to trace around this building. So, and again, I only really care about the footprint. So we'll work our way around there. there. And because of the steepness of this terrain, I'm actually not going all the way out. And then we'll go ahead and close that. So now if we looked at it in the perspective view, that line is once again going all over the place. But it's approximately what I'm after. Let's use it in the top view and project it. I'll type project onto that surface. Go ahead, enter. And then I can use that like I did before as a trim. So let me zoom select it on it. I'll type in trim. I can select the middle. And that then cuts it out of my building. So for example, if I were to <coughs> excuse me, hide this building, you can see there's that cutout. So let me come back and show. There it is. You can see that it's fitting rather nicely. It looks like I may have, oh no, that's filled in there. So that's good. So here's another example of, of trying to kind of adjust and, and fill in this part of the terrain. So if I wanted to fill this in, let's do an intersect of this surface and that. And I'm going to do it on a temporary layer because it's going to be messy. So I just typed in intersect, which is going to give me some curves. All I really care about is the intersection down here. right there, because I want to be able to connect to that point. And we'll come in here to there. Oops. And over here. And we'll come back up to that corner. And then we can come back to that point there. So I've kind of outlined that building. Let me select it. I'm going to change that layer here. Change object layer. Okay, so now that I've done that, let's make this active. I can turn off that intersection so that I don't end up with all those messy lines. So that little piece there, and maybe it's easier to see it if I were to hide this, that little green line is that new piece of terrain that I need to fill in right there. So that's a curved network. If I wanted to uh, adjust the sides, of course, I could rebuild these. So let me explode them. And I think this, this edge here, I had two that needed to be joined together. There we go, those need to be joined. Perfect. Now I could take this, for example, and I could rebuild it. And let's rebuild it by say three, say okay. And then I could take this control point in the middle. Never mind. Come on. Let me turn off the gumball. It's messing me up here. There's that point. We can move that point. It's just softening that curve. Move, 
V for vertical. There we go. Just soften that a little bit. Now this curve here, I really should project down onto the purple surface. So I come here and let's project it so that it matches up exactly. So there's the projection. Let's take this and this and this and that, and we'll do a network surface. Say okay. And now if I were to show the building, you can see that I've, I've kind of adapted and filled in that little bit of terrain as it comes around the building. It's kind of a nice smooth way of, of solving that problem. So you can do something like that if you need to do some integration. The opposite would be to, to extend and not have something like that um, in there at all, like I did on the, uh, the other terrain. Okay, so that's now installed here. I'm gonna go ahead and go to file and then save. And I know I'm running short on time, but bear with me just a little bit longer. I wanna talk about bringing the ocean in. So in this file, we're gonna bring the ocean in as a block. I'll go to edit, blocks, insert block instance. And I already downloaded that ocean file. So it's right here. And there's ocean one. Go ahead and say, okay. This is again going to be linked as a reference. We'll say, okay. We can go ahead and say, okay, again. And we can drop it in basically anywhere. And what this is, is it's a really large kind of like a dinner plate where the edges curl up a little bit. And the idea is that if we need to curl them up higher to kind of cover up the horizon we can because we can flex that that horizon line of the ocean relatively easily so right now it's too high obviously the ocean's cutting right through my building so i need to move it down so let's zoom out a little bit and we'll say move v for vertical and we'll move it down and at some point it kind of flattens out so we need to make sure we're high enough so that the ocean's covering the shallows there so it's right about there or so, and that gives us that ocean looking out at the horizon. So if I were to start to set up my view, you can see that I have that ocean out there. So let's zoom in a little bit. And again, I could change my, um, if nothing selected, I could change my lens length here to be a 28 millimeter. And we could zoom in just a little bit, kind of get this, set the way we want it. Remember, we can also pan if necessary. Oops, sorry. Sorry, one more time. I lost my mouse. There we go. Sometimes you gotta love the remote desktop. Okay, so I get my view set. Okay, I'm happy with this view. I'm gonna save that view. I'll go to my uh, set view, name views. And this would again be render 01. I'll click OK. Now I have that view saved. It doesn't mean you can't change this view later on, but um, it's just getting yourself set up for a particular view. So next thing would be to open up my V-Ray. And again, I would want to load in those settings. So I'll go into settings and I'll load my settings. I already had the 06. So we'll do the same very high settings. There it is. And we need to insert that sun. So I'll come back to sun. This is again going to be San Francisco. There's San Francisco. And it had slightly different settings for San Francisco. Here it is. Uh, 830 again, 152 again. So that's good. Actually, it's all the same settings. Hmm, okay. That'll make my life a little bit easier. So eight. Okay. We'll go ahead and say okay. And I'll put that on my building. Then we'll come in to my environment. We're going to clear this. We'll select a new bitmap. This is going to be that reference file. And I want to make sure my uh, rotation is set to 0.92. So 
So 0 0.92. And then we'll jump back here. Oops, go back to my settings. I have to clear the GI. And again, it'll be bitmap. And it's my environment this time. And I'm also doing a rotation of 0 0.92. All right. And so now that those are set, I can actually perform a rendering of this file. So we can click on render here and see if that works. Now, it's entirely possible that my materials would be wrong again. My ocean might not be correct. Yeah, it looks like my ocean's not quite correct. So there are some things that I need to touch up. Um, and we can cover those touch ups next class without a problem. But this is kind of the big goal. This is what we're trying to get to. As I said before, I will correct this and give you terrain uh, and a texture on top of that terrain so it's not just white, um, so that it's, it's fair because the, I gave the, the Tahoe people that as well. Uh, it looks like the Tahoe one is, has filled out. Um, I'm, I'm seeing the bottoms of the lakes as opposed to the actual reflections of the lake. So there's a few things to touch up on the materials. But like I said, we can kind of address those next class uh, without much of a problem. So we're just trying to get them into the site. That's the big ticket item for today. And obviously keep modeling on your uh, original retreat. So if your retreat's not done, you can still get it in place, right? If this file's not done, you can still get it put into your um, site. And then as you continue to evolve it, it's just a matter of updating the blocks. That's really the advantage of having it set up this way. Okay, so I've gone through those options. I know in the handout, I talked even more in depth about you could add rocks and you can add all kinds of extra things. We will get to those. Just try to push yourself as far as you can. Get materials in, get the HDRIs in. Again, the further you get, the better off you're going to be next class. Okay, so I'll let you guys get to work. Um, if you have questions, let me know. I will probably have this file posted uh, with, the, with the correct terrain and stuff um, fairly shortly today. But again, it depends on kind of who has questions and, and what have you, okay? So I'm gonna stop my share now. And does anybody have questions before I let you go? Sir, I just have one quick question. Sure. Uh, I know I should probably know this being this in deep in the class, but I always get this mixed up. So you know how an in shape, I mean in shape, um, what am I talking about? SketchUp, I'm sorry, SketchUp. You have the push and pull tool, which makes you can make the blocks, right? Right. On Rhino, is it the extrude or extrude surface? That's the that's the same command, right? Or which yeah, one? Yeah. Well, it depends. So the push pull tool in SketchUp. Let me share my screen one more time. Um, and it's a it's a good question, and I think it would be helpful if I. It's where do there it is. Just so I can just so I can get yeah, it. Yeah. No, it's it's okay. It's okay. Let me. Uh, Okay, I'll work in this file, for example. So the push-pull tool in SketchUp, is essentially, if you have a flat surface, right? So I have this surface, and I want to pull that to make it three-dimensional, then exactly. you're right. An extrude surface would do it. And okay. you want to make sure you're under objects, you choose solid, because that gives you a top and a bottom. Mm -hmm. Then I can do it. The, the difference, though, is that when... After I've created the object, if I want to change it in SketchUp, you just go back to the push pull tool and you do it again and you adjust it. Right? Yeah. In Rhino, you're going to want to use a command called scale 1D. So, what that does is it scales only in one direction. And so, oh, I yeah. can say that the existing right here, I want to make that bigger or smaller. Mm -hmm. So, initially, it's the extrude surface. But after that, if you want to change it, it's going to be the scale 1D. Okay. And then obviously it doesn't make it hollow inside, right? It makes it all, it's an actual block, right? Well, so everything in Rhino is technically hollow inside. Okay. And that's, that's the way it's supposed to be. Uh, it will appear, if we have shaded mode on, it will appear solid, mm -hmm. but nothing in Rhino is actually a solid. Okay. It, okay. It, because it's, 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 it's a series of surfaces that are joined together. Mm, okay, they got it. So, so then, I think it's slightly different than, say, a SolidWorks or uh, a um, even Sketch. SketchUp's kind of halfway in between, if I'm mm -hmm. being honest. Yeah. Uh, because it's quasi solid, but not really. Um, but like a SolidWorks is taking it, or a 3D Studio would be taking it as a pure solid object. 
Rhino is saying, hey, it's all surfaces, but I know you want to think it's a solid object, so I'll let you think it's a solid object, but it's mm. not. So I could, with this, if I were to zoom selected, I could actually zoom right into it, and now suddenly I'm on the inside of the shape. Okay, okay. And then you can do whatever edits you want, right? And it'll right. Be just, okay, perfect. All right, appreciate that, Professor. Thank you. Thank yeah, you no, no, no. Those are, these are good questions, and don't, don't feel bad that it took you this long to ask that question. <laughs> it's okay. You asked it, and I wouldn't be surprised if somebody else on this was curious about the same thing. So don't, don't ever hesitate to ask. Appreciate it, Professor. Thank you. You have a great day. You too. Do I have any other questions? Yes. Can I ask a question, please, Professor? Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, regarding the design building, do we have to do it on SketchUp and then uh, import it to, to Rhino, or will we do it from scratch into Rhino? Or? I'd rather have you do it from scratch in Rhino. Okay. So if you, if you do something in SketchUp and you try to bring it in, it's going to yeah. come in as a mesh file, and it gets really messy. Uh, and it's much harder to apply textures to that. It's possible, but uh, it's much cleaner if we start in Rhino. And since this is class is fundamentally about Rhino, I'd much rather have you do it from Rhino. Got it. Thank you. No problem. Anybody else? No? Okay, sounds good. Well, if uh, I'll, be, I'll be sticking around. Uh, so if any of you guys have any questions, you're welcome to stay on and I'll, I'll answer questions. If not, get to work. Next week, we'll, uh, we'll tackle some more, and uh, this project will start to come together, I promise. <laughs>